Now, and we'll do, so, yeah, do a record. All right, okay. you're ready to start whenever you want to, my friend. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Welcome. We are very excited about tonight's presentation. We're going to talk about trade shows, um, well, ASD in particular, and how we can leverage trade shows to target them for private label uh, and sourcing opportunities and to find companies that allow you to private label their products. So we're going to get into the tactics that we use, um, how we do this um, for our own business. And we're going to share that with you so you guys can knock it out. If Now, this is perfect if you're going to the trade show or not. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into what we call the no-show method, but it's a great little trick. But what you can do is leverage the trade show to um, build relationships with wholesalers, and it's pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do is – oops, i got to click on this. Yeah. Guys, there's right. an abundance of opportunities when selling with wholesale products, whether you're doing it, you know, the arbitrage style, but we're really going to focus in on tonight. We're doing it uh, for, you know, for private label. And, and Ryan Rieger yeah. is the king of doing this. So we're so lucky to have him on here with us as well uh, and, and, and talk to you guys through that. So um, as far as a quick agenda, I love agendas. I, Abe always makes fun of me, but I make agendas. Um, so obviously we're going to talk about why trade shows can be gold mines uh, for private labeling, and gold we're going to take you really. We thought, we thought, right? Did I spell it? Oh, gold mines! <laughs> well, gold mines. <laughs> you guys didn't tell me that earlier when I sent this out. Oh, oh it's, all it's right. Well, we're going to be gold mines and gold mines. It's a little bit of both. There's a play on word. We're just going to pretend like it was meant that way. Um, and uh, so we're going to take you guys through this chronologically. Uh, you know, everything you need for getting registered, uh, as, as Abe had mentioned, you know, this can be applied to any trade show uh, out there, wholesale trade show, but ASD is one of the largest ones coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Uh, so we're going to focus a little bit more on that just because it's very timely. Uh, but, you know, getting registered, everything that you need to get registered, we've got templates for that and the questions that they ask. So we're going to walk you through that. Um, Abe's going to do some of his fancy data mining techniques to find uh, private label friendly wholesale companies. So he's found a way to go to the ASB website, look through the, what is it, 2,500 or so yeah, wholesale more. companies that are listed there or more, and uh, go through them and look uh, for, you know, narrow it down so you can have uh, ones that are better, more likely to be private label friendly. And then once you narrow down that list, we're going to talk you through, you know, how you can contact those suppliers, how you can set up accounts with them. You want to do this all in advance. It's all in preparation for the show. And then we've got some, uh, some other really great things that you need to know for preparing for the show and getting ready for them. And then finally, we're going to talk you through what you can expect at a, at a trade show. So um, we've got all the steps laid out there for you. And then we've got a little offer there in the end uh, in, in ways that this can be done for you. We've yep. done a lot of work in preparation. We do this for ourselves, for our business. So we're happy to share those things. Uh, but overall, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So awesome. let's get to it. Let's get to it. So, so what is ASD? Ryan, how do you feel about this? One? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not even sure. I think it stands for America's Source Direct, but yeah. I'm not quite sure. Um, it's a huge trade show, guys. Every uh, It's twice a year, usually in March and August. Um, I think it might start in July, at the end of July this year. But um, it's huge. It's at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Uh, I, I just it's the largest trade show I've ever been to. I'm not sure if it's as big as like the Canton Fair in China, um, but it's by far the largest one I've ever personally been to. It's um, just humongous. That's all I can say about that. Um, but you guys can take the the tactics and the strategies that Abe and Chrissy are going to talk about tonight and use them whether or not you attend ASD or any trade show. And just know that the tactics he's going through are applicable to about any other trade show. I mean, really any of them. Some of them don't have the same types of websites that ASD does. ASD is, has a really cool website. You could do searches with uh, suppliers. Um, not every trade show is exactly like that. Um, but still, the, the methods that he, Abe is going to show will work at any trade show. Um, but let's say that you just hate going to trade shows and it's just not your thing. Well, you don't have to. Use the, the trade show no-show method. Uh, you guys need to uh, apply a register. Or not you need to register for ASD, even if you don't want to go, even if you have no desire to go there in a couple weeks. Um, go ahead and register for it anyway, because you'll get access to all the suppliers. Nate's going to go through that and show you how to do that and uh, why do that and when. I think that 
the uh, dates March 3rd, the last day to register for free. Yep. Um, but yeah. you can go there and you can, you can register for it. You'll get access to all the suppliers. And let's say you don't go and you can tell them, hey, I'm, I registered for it, but I was unable to make it. Uh, but I'm really interested in your line of pet supplies. And you, you, your foot is in the door essentially because you registered for it. So register for it, even if you have no desire to go to a trade show. And thirdly, private label, the easy way using wholesale products. Uh, my goodness, we could talk, we could do a whole webinar on that, but essentially, we have, we have, <laughs> that's true, we have. I did, I did one last night and then did just, did just was just on another one with Brett Bartlett just a, a, an hour ago. Um, but the easy way method, guys, essentially is just remember the magic question. It's worked so well with wholesale companies. If I could boil private label down, um, and just do into a few sentences because most people think private label as being with the hard way. They think sourcing from China, uh, big uh, containers of products, huge minimums. And that's kind of scary when you're starting out. But with the easy way method, it's literally uh, our biggest supplier for the easy way method is wholesale companies. And where do you find a, a plethora of wholesale companies all in one place? Well, it's a trade show. So we just use the ma magic question. We go to a trade, we go to a vendor that has generic non-brand driven type products that they're displaying. And we ask the magic question, which is, can I take your products out of their packaging and put it into my own? And I think Christy's going to get into that a little bit later. Um, yeah. But you can do this at every single vendor that has generic non-brand driven products and most of them do. Lots of them do. Uh, yeah, and it just makes yeah. it so easy. A company, a wholesale company that you go to at a trade show that you're trying to sell their product on Amazon, some of them might be, well, we don't want our brand on there or we don't like Amazon or whatever. You guys have probably heard all that. But if you ask them the magic question, which is, can I take it out of your packaging, put it in my own, then it opens up all these doors for private label and wholesale suppliers can be your private label um, suppliers. So is that what you guys wanted me to say? Yeah, that was yeah. beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. so the, um, register in advance for the show, guys. The last day to do that is in is March 3rd in four days. This Friday. Um, yeah, so you want to register in advance, whether you're going to the show or not, because once you register, you can access the entire vendor list. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can, get, you can begin to search that vendor list to see if you can find wholesalers uh, that are possible private label opportunities. And I'll get into that and show you what I mean by that. Um, so we will also show you what information is necessary uh, and what is, what is not necessarily necessary. We're going to show you, um, uh, we'll give a, give you guys a template of kind of, uh, you can organize all of your um, information on that template and, you know, so hey. is, yes, go ahead. Hey, do you want to, you, I've got, I've got it pulled up here. If you want me to show it, do you want to switch over screen? Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was in a slide. It's up to you. I mean, you want, you know, <laughs> I can stop sharing. Yeah. I mean, this is informal, right? Why not? Yep. We'll show them. Go ahead. Pull it up. All right. Oh, I've got to find where I can. I can't. See I stopped sharing, I... so you're you're good to go. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Screen share. And here. And share screen. And... Steve, there'll be a replay. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Brian's, Brian's recording this. Oh. All right. That doesn't mean you can cool. leave, though, Steve. Okay, there we go. Gotta stick yeah, around. Gotta stay. That's right. Um, yeah. So, oh, so that's 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 the registration uh, sheet. Yep. Yeah. So w actually, whenever I went on to ASD, and this is what I because uh, I registered <laughs> for it, I happened to just copy and paste everything that it asked me. So if you guys are wondering what types of things they're going to ask you, some most of the questions are very straightforward. Okay, so you're going to give your name, all of your information, your email, your phone number. Uh, what type of store do you represent? You know, they give you an option. They give you a drop down of options. You can choose whichever one you feel comfortable with. I'll just say before we get into all of this, there's no real right or wrong. There's nothing that you can say that is a wrong answer here. Um, how many stores does your company have? I chose one. Percentage of sales online, 100%. You can choose whatever you guys want or whatever is actually true for your business. I just like to give these because I, I've had a lot of people contact me with questions and say, what do I say with this? And oh, do I tell them that I do private label? Should I say that in advance? Yeah. Sure, of course you can. Um, is, uh, yeah, I, let's I see. see yeah, so does your company import merchandise direct from a manufacturer? Yeah, uh, it can, yes. Um, you can choose what your regions are, minimum order you can meet. You can pick whatever you want, guys. Mm -hmm. So This, this doesn't you, matter at all. No, nope, they're not gonna yeah. like deny you it, access yeah. for, no. for what you yeah. put, so. They, they just want to know so they can what they can focus 
uh, on right. you for their profile. And it's it's for what's going to so, be on your badge. So if you select importer, it's going to say importer. If you select retailer, it's going to say retailer underneath your name. Yeah, yeah and what they do, they, now they have a barcode on your badge as well. Yep. So when you go into a booth, they scan it and they get all of your information. So they know they they know all your information ahead of time. So, uh, you know, opening an account is is automatic when you, once you're there. So, um, uh, Abe, I'm gonna give you back the screen here in just a yep, second. So I'm seeing that, but you guys, you can go ahead. I've I've shut it off. But um, yeah. this will we can send this out in an email to you guys. Yeah, we'll give you that template. We got a couple of templates for you tonight. So, um, so yeah, so that's that gives you kind of a breakdown of what's uh. You know what what to expect for information so you don't have to overthink the process to sign up it's really very easy and once you've signed up before your information saved so every time you want to sign up again it's it's automatically in the database they'll send out an, you'll be on their email list for an automatic sign up for the next show matter of fact i'm already signed up for the next show six months from this one so yeah um oh, i gotta click on the screen again Love this. <laughs> right. Are you um, the down arrow so yeah, Christy. So this is your um, your spot here. Research. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally my spot. Um, so. Oh wait. No, is this um, the targeting. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so I don't know. I so Abe, could, Sorry, I had to move my pictures. <laughs> got it. Um, so um, all right. So once you're registered, we had already sort of uh, kind of foreshadowed this, but whenever you get to the um, ASV, uh, when you get on the website, there is a really robust website where you can do a lot of searching and they have a list of all of the companies there. So the next thing you're looking to do chronologically, once you sign up, you're going to want to find the companies that, uh, that will allow you to private label their products. So yeah. in order to do that, you, like we said, there's a list. I think we just looked at it. Abe, what was there, like 2,600? Yeah, so I'll, show you, I'll show you in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't possibly go through all of those. So we have a few tips and tricks, um, yeah. mostly what Abe found. And so we're going to take you on through yeah. that. And we've got suggested keywords. Uh, and then Abe, why don't you just work the magic? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, basically what I figured out now going through, uh, I actually learned this going through Ryan's database that he had uh, in his group. Um, and what I started to notice, and as we had VAs doing this and mining through the list and looking for private label companies, I started to notice a trend that a lot of companies who ended up leading to be uh, private label targets would have similar words in the titles of their company name. So uh, two, two of these words were imports and trading. A lot of companies with these names in their title, like so-and-so imports or so-and-so trading, whatever, they seem to be more frequently have private label opportunities there. So, um, we started searching based on this and I, and I'm going to show you navigating the website right now live. So, um, let me just do that real quick and pull There's a up. lot of words. I mean, there's, you know, imports and trading, but, um, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, so here's, okay, okay sorry. No, let, me, let me just, let me just back up so I can walk people through So when you're on the, this is the ASD website. Um, you're going to come here, you can sign up, but, uh, you click on attendee and there's registration and then there's access to the vendor list. Um, there's also a show planner and, and, a, you know, that sort of thing, but I like going into the vendor list. Now, when you want to start searching with keywords, you want to click on home. For some reason, if you go right to the vendor list, it blocks you for some reason, it doesn't let you do any searches. So you got to click home and then back to attendee vendor directory and it'll pull up a massive list of wholesale companies. So as you can see, there's 2,300, 2,631, and it grows wow. every day. We're on here every day, and it grows every day. Just a few minutes ago, we were literally doing this before. It was 2,629. Yeah, it, it's, it's constantly yeah. growing. <laughs> so companies are, are constantly registering, getting booths. So what it is, so now you can search by, um, if you click on only in exhibitor name, you can search by company name. So here's where I start to narrow it down. So I'm just going to write the word imports in here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So not only is this way to kind of, but this also organized the list. So now it's down to 70 exhibitors. So you put these keywords in for names like imports or trading, and it'll narrow down to, you know, a hundred or so or less companies that you begin to just click on the names of the company. So what I do is I'll just go down here 
and uh, you know, click on one, one of these companies like day-to-day -day imports. So, and what I do is now you, you come to this next page and it gives you um, the company's website. It tells you the booth number where they're located at the show. Uh, and also it shows the categories that they sell. This one sells automotive and pet products. Um, and what you do is you begin to see how wholesale companies actually list the categories they sell in. Like it's not like Amazon. So if you go to search home and kitchen, or if you try to search for a particular product, you're not going to get any results. You want to search things like homewares, kitchenware, uh, automotive, pet products, right? So as you're looking at the company names, take a note of how they list their category names. So then you can also do a search by category because uh, they'll, they'll, they'll lock into keywords here, how they list them here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just click on the website and what I do is just give a quick glance at the website and I'm looking for two things. One, are their products generic non-brand driven? Um, so it could be a good idea to private label. And also I wanna know what their products are because later when I send them a template email or call them, I want to say, Hey, I'm really interested in your product. This, you know, you want to probably know what they sell before you call them and talk to them about their product that you love so much. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to, you know, they have pet products here, you know, they have auto products, you know, let's click on a pet harness, you know, um, whether that is a great product or not, I don't know, but, as you can see, they're all generic. Cat, dog, comfort, travel, whatever, right? That's not a brand. There's no brand on these. And this is actually, um, you know, to be honest, this is actually a company that I have called and uh -huh. spoke to them. And they do private label their products. And But there are tons of these, you know. But what I do is I come here and look, okay, is this generic non-brand driven? Yes. Well, then it goes into a list, a call list. Right. So I'm getting ready to go to the show. And then this is when they go into the call list where I'm going to contact the, the supplier, tell them I'm going to be at the show. And, you know, Christy can talk about that in a little bit because she's made a ton of calls in the last few weeks. Um, uh, it's just amazing how many companies we've been able to find. So it's pretty cool. So that is pretty much how I go dig through a wholesale list to search for um, private label uh, uh, companies who potentially will private label their items. Um, so yeah. let's go so back. Check it out, guys. It's Im imports and trading. Those are two really good words. And you'll yeah. end up, and we're not saying all of them, but we're saying we are narrowing down the 2600 down to a smaller amount. What was this? Was it like a hundred on this? Yeah. Page? So every time you search, every time you search through a keyword, you're going to narrow down the list a little bit. So now, even if I don't select exhibitor name and I want to just select a category, let's say kitchenware, I think that's how they say it kitchenware with my fast typing. Okay. And I'm going to hit, oh, I don't want to hit, don't want to hit exhibitor name. So just in general, such kitchenware. And see now, sorry, now it narrows it down to 133 exhibitors, right? So it kind of narrows down um, every time for, you know, whatever. So you can click, click on, uh, you know, let's just click on the first one. I have no idea. No, 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 this don't know this company, but it says general, uh, general merchandise house suit, how it says housewares, kitchenware, tabletop, small appliances, pet products, right? That's how they list their categories. Uh -huh. So let's just click on this first one. Um, and you can see again, look, generic non-brand driven products, rainbow markers, right? These are all generic, not brand. It just said food storage containers. Okay. So just by just a couple of pass through pictures right there, this is going to go on my list. They do have some brand items, but they have some that aren't branded. So this is going to go on my list. I'm going to call them and see if I could put my own brand label on their products. Right. So two for two. And that was, that one is one I don't know. So put that in the list, Christy, will you? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. I actually already have that one, but yeah. Oh, you do have it. Okay. You're ahead of me then. All right. Yeah. So um, let me just, all right, let me go back to the PowerPoint here. Um, okay. So, oops, started from the beginning. Where was I? All right. So here is, here is our template. This is the template that uh, with Christy or I call companies. Um, this is how we put it in company name. 
we, we want to know where they are located in the United States because if they're in California, you know, shipping costs are going to be more than if they're in, you know, Tennessee or New York because we're in the Northeast, right? So uh, we list their website and their booth number. That's important. You want to know where they are located at the show, all right? What types of products do they sell? So we list the categories that we sell so we know how to search for the categories. Uh, we, we, do we, did they confirm verbally on the phone whether they can private label or not. We list minimum order quantities. And then we ask them if they have their own private label arm, which is, will they um, private do all the work for us, right? I know that's the scary question that people may not want to ask, but we want to know if they will, you know, private label for, if they have a private label program that they could use. That's a great question to ask because, look, hey, to test to test your product out, you may not want to have them do it because the minimums might be high. But let's say yeah. that you get a product going and it's going well, and you're tired of switching out the packaging yourself, and it's working for you. You're willing to to do a hundred or five hundred, even a thousand units if they do the work. Um, I think that's totally fine. You may not start out there and have them do that, but it's a good question yep. to know in advance. Yeah, and I would say as I've been going through um, and calling, um, you know, just finding, going through these exact same steps that I've just mentioned and going through and I'm, you know, I'm calling, I'm a call person. We have an mm -hmm. email template to show you, but I do ask this, you know, do you have your own private label arm? And I would say about 50% of them, eh, maybe a little bit less than that, 40 to 50% mm -hmm. um, have said yes or that they could do that for me. They do have very high minimums. So you're not going to, I mean, you're looking at ordering, you know, 500, it's either right. a really high dollar amount or you're looking at like a thousand units or something like that. So it's not something that you want to start with, but it's a really good thing to know that if you've got a solid product that you're working on, just like Ryan said, when uh -huh. you're done doing all that heavy work, you've proven that it's a product and you want to move on. It's uh -huh. nice that that has a built-in option for you to take it to that next level exactly. already. Yep. So I think, um, I think, I think we covered so, this. <laughs> yeah. So we just covered this. So yeah, I mean, you would just call them and ask Ryan's magic question, you know, can I put, uh, your, your product into my own brand branded packaging and so, some form of that. Right. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we just kind of covered all that. Um, and here is uh, an email template. If you don't like to call suppliers, I think that's much more effective because, uh, you know, when you call them, you could sit, you, you know, Christy could speak about, oh, yeah. the, speak about the so, conversation of when you call. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys are welcome to use this. Um, and, I, and it's a variation. I know Ryan has one. We all sort of have our own little templates that we use. Um, so first of all, you know, I just call them and I introduce myself. I say, um, I have, a, I first, I call and I usually get some sort of reception or it's not the right person to talk to. And I say, um, my name's Christy. Um, I found your company name on the ASD uh, website. I have a question about one of your products. Are you the right person to talk to? And they're like, oh no, let me go. No, no, no. So then they transfer me over to someone else. I reintroduce myself. Say I found them from the website or from the ASD website. Um, and I said, you know, I have a question. And of course I've, on, I've been on the website as Abe mentioned before, and I'm, I know what products they have, you know, if they have like a pet product or if they have a home and kitchen product, or if they have an automotive product, I've looked up something and I, it doesn't matter what it is. And I find a specific product and I say, you know, I am interested in these bamboo sheets. Um, and you know, I, uh, my question is I have my own brand line. I'm a seller. I have my own brand line and I would like to take these sheets, your bamboo sheets, and take it out of its packaging and I want it to put it in mine because I have my own brand line. I want to be very clear with you up front. More often than not, they say, yeah, we don't really care. I mean, as long as you buy it from us, we're okay. Um, they, you know, and, and, and a lot of times I think it's their own private label product that they're getting from overseas. So they're doing the hard work for you. They're going over to the manufacturers overseas. They're creating their own brand, just making it a generic brand, and then they're allowing anyone else to use it after that. Um, not all the times, but some of the times uh, that ends up being the case. But what I love, so you can get all of that, a lot of that by using this email template. What I like to do um, is I like to have a conversation with them because not only can I get some of that information, but I also have the opportunity to ask them a couple of additional questions. So one question I always ask is, you know, obviously I'm really into like, you know, your bedding or the, sh the sheets or the ba all of your bamboo products or whatever it is that I've asked them about. And I said, uh, but um, can you tell me what else is selling really well? Is there anything uh, else? You know, because I sell a lot of things and I just, this is just one thing that caught my eye. I was in the, you know, I was looking for, you know, a betting line or something, but I really just sell a lot of other things. What sells really well? What's really, what are people asking for? What are some of your new products? 
So it gives me that opportunity to open that dialogue. And they're usually like, oh, well, you know, we got this, or oh, people really love that. Or, you know, sometimes they'll just say, listen, I've got a couple of clients that order a bunch of different things I really couldn't tell you. Sometimes you just don't have the right person on the phone to ask to, to answer that, but a lot of times you do. Um, so I ask them what they recommend. And then I also, of course, I've already let them know that I'm going to be at ASD. So I said, you know, I'll be at ASD. Are you going to be there? Will you be there? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Or, oh, no, you know, my boss or some, you know, my, my coworker or somebody else is going to be there. Okay, great. Well, I'd love to, can you transfer me? I'd love to, I'm going to be there. I want to make a point to stop by your booth. Um, I'd love to speak with whoever that is um, and, and introduce myself before I get there. Or if it's them. Um, and then as soon as I get them on the phone or if it's the same person, I say, well, you know, are you going to be running any specials at ASC? Um, you know, I'm going to be there. I want to stop by. I'm noticing on your website that, you know, minimum opening order is $300 or something. Do you cut that down or what sort of deals are you running? So I get to ask all these additional questions. So some people may not be like me. That's totally fine. You can do this back and forth in a lot of different emails. Um, Abe and I, I think, have found that when you send an email and you put a ser all 10 of these questions all in one email, you're not usually going to get a really great response if you get yeah. a response at all. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot easier to get this very quickly. And I've built a relationship with them. And yeah. they know to expect me. And I say, you know what, I'm going to be there on Monday. I'm going to make sure Monday is the day that I stop by your booth. Yeah. So, um, you know, those are a lot of the things that you can say. But the whole point of this, right, so we've registered for ASD. We've now narrowed our list of, of yeah. we're focusing on the private label, the wholesale companies that are private label friendly. And now we're registering for, with them in advance. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to set up an account with them. They said, okay, great. Yes, you can private label our products. You can do whatever you want. You can put it in your project. Fantastic. Now I have a list of companies that I can look through all of their catalogs. Okay, send me your catalog. Mm -hmm. So I can know all of this in advance. So I'm yes. very prepared when yeah. I walk into that. But even if, like, we do the no-show trade show, if you're not going to be there, you still have all of that. You can still look through the catalog. Yeah. You can still ask them for the specials, mm -hmm. and they'll honor that. So Yeah, yeah if I could jump in here, the – that's exactly yeah. right. Like you don't have to be at the show to do this. Right. This is all happening before you get to the show. So you just pretend that you're going to the show and then, oops, my kids got sick or, you know, my flight got canceled or who knows what happened, but you just couldn't make it. No big deal. But you've still already built that relationship. Uh, you know, and the, ch and the show is so big, you know, they don't really, unless you book a, a specific appointment, they're not really going to know, but you, you can already be ordering products before the show, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, you have that, you have that opportunity too. So it doesn't matter whether you do this, whether you, you, you attend or not. Um, so uh, that's a, that's a great tip. And when you're sending emails, usually asking all those questions that Christy has asked in one call, you're going to have to do that over several emails, right? So the first is the general email that goes like, if you ask all those questions in the first email, you're usually, they're usually going to ask you a million questions about your business and want all the documents and everything first, you know? If you ask just a simple template email like this, uh, then you'll have to go into an email sequence back and forth with them asking them those questions. But a, a live call, much quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, I, Abe, I was going to quickly show them the, um, the template of information that I put all of my information. Because when you register, so you've had the phone call with them. Yeah, but now they're it. like, okay, great, sign up. We need to have all of your information to get you in our system. So Go what ahead, I've start. done, Hold up. yeah, all right, let's, let's share screen here. All right. So what I've done is I fill out all of my information in advance. This is for me. So, you know, I put my, my company name. You want to make sure that this is not your Amazon name. So what, how Amazon knows you is not the same name yeah. as what you're, is, is what you're doing here. Um, yeah, this, uh, this, is, this is, sorry, if I jump in, this is, this is all yeah. the information that, at some point, you may or you know, this is like m over many companies, we've been asked these questions. You know, some companies only ask like some of these questions. Some don't, you know, just a resale number is all you need to give them. I usually send that out in the template email with my business information and usually you're in, right? Mm -hmm. Some come back and want a copy of your EIN or they want to know your website, you know, things like that. And depending on how deep they want to dig in, you know, you can decide whether or not you want to, uh, you know, proceed with opening an account. I mean, if they're asking too much and it seems like there's a brick wall there, you know, just move on to another company. But at least this organizes all of your information so you have it available 
to send back an email real quick instead of fudge like me i'm a you know i my desk's a mess and i like have to like rummage through papers to find my resale certificate and remember the number so it's just great to have all this stuff in one template in one place go ahead christy yeah this is not necessarily what you send to them this is for your records to be able to quickly copy and paste and put it all in one place um, and, and sometimes you just register on their website as well, so it doesn't always have to be done by email. But this is something else that we can send you guys. Just it's a good thing to have. This is a template for yourself. So I'm going to stop sharing. We're going to give it back to you. Right back. Okay. Take it over. Okay. So next, so sourcing. This is this is um, one of my strategies that I do, which is extremely powerful, <laughs> which is sourcing products before the show. Uh, you know, so what I do is I show up to ASD with a shopping list, you know, a, a ton of leads that when I walk around the show, I know this is the products that I'm looking for. So, uh, you know, you guys know, uh, maybe familiar with data mining method that I use. Um, so that's what I do. I, I source through Amazon and I build a bunch of targets that I could go and source at the show. And these could be bundles. These could be private labels. These could be niches that I'm looking for products in. Uh, but I show up with a list um, and um, that's just one way to do it. And so you could also, um, you know, grab some of these wholesale lists that you find when you call them. And if say they send you a list um, of their products, you know, you could start to, you know, go through these catalogs and, you know, be ready to order some of these products when you go there and speak to these wholesalers, you know, but you can search through these products ahead of time. Um, and also be prepared to source products during the show, right? So as you're walking through the show, have a notebook with you. Start to write down product opportunities you may see. You may go into the booth and be like, oh, wow, that looks cool. Write that down. When you're back at your hotel room that night, start data mining that information. You know, look it up on Amazon. See, see what you can do with it. See how you can bundle it. Look for those types of options. You're at the show, make the most out of it. Mm -hmm. So here is actually, oh, this is a big slide. <laughs> here is, this is, this is <laughs> my You're like making gigantic. Well, I, yeah, it was big. Okay, well, there's a lot on there. Sorry. Uh, this is my shopping list. So this is, ex this is the exact template that I use uh, to build out a shopping list um, and, and products. And, uh, you know, I search everything through keywords. So everything in the green in my go category those are all gaps in the market. Those are all leads, right? Those are product targets. Um, but behind each one of those targets are several other products, you know, bundling opportunities, uh, you know, product ideas. So I have, you know, I just category Amazon first page. I pick possible private label targets, bundling options. I find all my related keywords you know, and I do my market research. So I kind of do this all beforehand. So I have specific targets when I go to the show. Um, that is not that, that I don't know that what that list looked like to you guys, but that was a ridiculous amount of work on ACI. Yeah. I mean, he's getting really fast at it, but still that was like blood, sweat and tears yeah. going into that so, to figure out you know, these, these uh, targets where there are gaps in the market that say, this would be a really good product to private yeah. label. This, this concept right here is a really good product. You know, we look at pet harnesses. That's not on the list, but if, if, you know, Abe does this research and he comes up and he says, okay, maybe pet harnesses yeah. are really good products. So, then he knows I'm going to go to a ton of different booths that sell pet harnesses and he's going to look to try to private label those. Yeah. So that's just an so, example of, it's kind of blurred out, but that's the type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I had to blur it out because I didn't want to give away my, you know, all my private label finds on live, right? But basically, I look at it like this. Behind every keyword that I find, any keyword you, you find and type into the Amazon search bar comes up to a product page, right? And there's 16 or 24 products on that product page. Behind each one of those products is an Amazon listing. And in every Amazon listing, is a number of different leads to products fre frequently bought together. Uh, customers who, all, who bought this also bought. You can find customer buying trends and see how customers actually shop and what else do they buy with items. Uh, you have the scroll that says, you know, sponsored products, right? Other sponsored products. Were well, those are private, other private label products? How are, they, how are they selling their product? How are they bundling? What other products are related to it that are also private label, right? Between all the products in the first page, what is commonly frequently bought together? 
which is a perfect complementary item or what can be used with the item. So behind every keyword is just a massive amount of targets, right? So that's what the list is. It's not just one specific product. It is a, it's exponential from what you consider. This is why I love sourcing through search terms and I'm starting to geek out over this, I know. <laughs> it's, it's reverse from the product, it's, it's so reverse from product driven. Keywords are, are fantastic because the opportunities are just ridiculous, you know? So guys, I can just tell you when Abe, cause I mean, this is what he's like, but I just, I'm like, Hey Abe, I've got a quick question. And so we like hop on a screen share or whatever. And I'm like, what about this? And so he just goes and goes and, like 30 minutes later, he's found like four different products and he's just so excited. And he's so like above, like beyond the moon. Above <laughs> you, over yeah, the moon. Key, key, keywords, <laughs> are, keywords are game changing. Once you, once you retrain your, your mind, and refocus um, on on search terms and focusing on gaps. The potential for product ideas are just it's it's really endless. I mean, um, you know, you can come up with so many. And 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 if if you combine this with with market research, like the uh, competitive and demand test, and you do this, you collect the keywords, um, all the relevant keywords to your to your target. Like you find a gap and you find you know five or ten relevant keywords to that space run the competitive demand tests on all of those pages and take an average of competitive and demand. If those work within your numbers, you've just laser focused in on a gold mine, you know? So start sourcing products, start building products into that space, whether it's a private label, a bundle, combination of both. Um, it's just, it's just endless. I'm, 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 I could probably go all night. That's, that's probably another webinar. He really could, guys. He really could okay. and he has. It gets crazy. All right, I'm sorry. Let's talk about business cards now. Oh, this is so <laughs> so boring to consider. Oh my gosh, I'll fly through this, guys. These are things. These are just really practical stuff. If you're going, if you are actually going to a trade show, any trade show, you need some business cards. They don't have to be fancy. Um, what I have on on mine when I'm going around for buying is uh, put something like senior buyer on it. Um, a lot of the bigger companies have. Have, you have buyer, they have uh, purchasing, whole purchasing uh, departments. And the people that are in those departments are called buyers. So if you call yourself a senior buyer, it just makes you look bigger than you really are. Um, of course, book your travel in the hotel. The trade show app is awesome. Um, also, Abe, I was answering questions. So I don't know if you asked, the, if you answered or talked about this, but did you uh, mention adding these items to the, um, the planning, uh, the trade show planner for ASD, where if they have like, you know, 20 different ones they want to visit, you add it to the planner and it will uh, sort it based on where they are in the, in the convention center? Uh, is, as far as the products or the, or the uh, vendors? The, the vendor booths. Yeah, you can you could add the vendor booths to the planner and okay. definitely find I out. I didn't know. I didn't want to. I was answering questions. So I didn't know if you ain't already talked about that. No, we didn't. We didn't okay. talk about it, but we talked about tracking the booth numbers so okay. you know the locations of them. Yeah, okay, you can perfect. Put that in the planner. If you put it in the planner, guys, then yep. um, the ASD website will uh, sort the uh, booths based on where they are. Because ASD, I'm telling you, you've not been there. It's so huge. Uh, you don't want to go from booth number three to three thousand, uh, and then back to number five hundred, and you know it's just tons of walking so because there's tons of walking wear comfortable shoes have a cell phone battery backup because if um if you're going around and you're scanning barcodes it'll drain your battery uh bring a notebook and or a pen or use your phone to take notes on the conversations that you have with folks definitely bring a bag to collect samples or a lot of times some of the booths will have them um, there and they'll give you free bags that they have but they're just not very big um so you'll gather gather tons of stuff so have something to put those in and then have your tax id handy of uh, just your, you know your resale tax certificate number for your state so that's my checklist and then next is my wife's checklist which is over i did I there you go so my wife's <laughs> name is my wife's Mulane, and so um, she is a girly girl, and so she gets cold when they, they have the, you know, the trade shows are big, and so there's lots of people, so they turn the air conditioning way down, so one of her things is a sweater. Um, she likes to have a rolling case, which, of course, I'm the one that's rolling it around. Um, <laughs> that's my job. She's like, yes, dear. <laughs> that's my job. Uh, Band-aids for the back of, <laughs> back of ankles, so that's not for the men. <laughs> with me at all times i'm just saying <laughs> and I the same yeah and then the last is snacks and water there are f there is food there but it's pretty pricey yeah um, and it's yeah just bring stuff definitely have your water and have some snacks to munch on in between uh 
<clears throat> booth. So guys, I know that's the practical boring stuff, but um, you don't want to forget. Oh, this is the map. This is huge. Yeah. This is how big it is. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Um, so I usually start in either the south upper or the lower, um, usually the upper because that's where a lot of closeouts and, st and stuff are. And a lot of companies that are totally fine with private label the easy way are on the south upper, which is on the right-hand side of this page. Um, you can read this yourself. I don't want to go through each of them, but just, just it's tons yeah. and tons of walking, tons and tons of booths. Uh, it's, it can be so overwhelming. So what they're teaching tonight is gold because you're going to go in with a plan. Uh, you're not going to go there and just be like eyes wide open, not know where to start. Uh, what's having a plan, it's going to be make you more efficient. You're going to get through it quicker. You're going to have, it's just going to be better for your business because you're going to have, you're going to know exactly who you're meeting. Um, and it'll save you tons of time. So Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's just millions of product sourcing opportunities at this. I mean, even when you saw on the, the left side, there is source direct. Uh, my first time at the show, that's where we started uh, because that's all overseas suppliers, China, India, Taiwan. I mean, you name it, Pakistan. And those vendors are so easy to talk to. You pretty much walk by their booths and they come out into the aisle and be like, Hey, come here, come check out my products. You know? So if you want to break the ice, I mean, you could just start there. So that was overseas sources. And then, yes, you have closeouts and liquidation. You have wholesale companies. You have, uh, I mean, you know, there's a smoke shop if you're into that. I mean, it's just a massive show. So much walking. I mean, you, you could be there every day and not hit every corner of it. So do either of you guys have a Fitbit? I am, I'm, I have my Fitbit and I have like major goals for this. I didn't have them before. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm betting on like 20,000 steps minimum. Yeah. And I, so yeah. bring your Fitbit. No, I, don't, I, I don't have one. I don't like to discourage uh, <laughs> myself on a daily basis. <laughs> hey, you spun in your chair five times today. Good job, buddy. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, uh, so the Boost runs show specials as well. Um, like as Christy mentioned, uh, when, you're, when you call your vendors, you can ask them about that. Mostly all of them offer show specials. If you place orders there, it'll be at a higher discount, uh, lower minimum order quantities. Um, and at the end of the show, you can bid on booths. Uh, we actually negotiated a couple. Um, we didn't buy, but, you know, we tried to, uh, some of the booths that we liked, especially if it's tons of the like, generic non-branded items or, or something, you can actually buy an entire booth at the show for really discounted prices. Um, there's one guy there every year who pulls up with like 10 tractor trailer trucks yeah. and buys every booth that he can. It's unbelievable. Um, so the other thing too is this show is other than just product sourcing, it's networking on a massive scale. I mean, 50,000 resellers are there, you know, I mean, there's just so you see everybody who is everybody on Facebook and um, man, if you know people on Facebook and they're going to the show with you, um, connect with these people and walk around. There is nothing more powerful than going around with like, you know, a two, three, four, five person team walking into a booth and saying, Hey, we're all business owners. You know, let's do business. Let's talk. Or walking into a booth and talking to a, a you find, you, you know, you spread out. One of you finds a good wholesaler who will private label their items. And you say, Hey, I'm here with several business owners in my network. You know, how would you like some more business? You make a phone call, five people or more walk into the booth. Uh, now you've just delivered value to the vendor. Now you've given him business, right? Not only is he going to remember you, but you could probably ask any question you want, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So leveraging your network is extremely powerful. It really is. Uh, so 